who weren't. I don't know. I, I, I just it, It's not a good experience. It's too crowded. You don't really have time to stop and look at everything. And I'll tell you, I got a couple of items. I got some. Uh, I got a, a pair of Exalta um, 88 Dale Earnhardt Jr. socks because I like wearing Dale Jr. socks, and I haven't had any for a couple of years because they haven't made any in a couple of years. And I picked up the Batman car, but they didn't have – um, much in the ways of, of paint schemes. They didn't have any of the Exalta paint scheme die casts, which, really dis- which I was really disappointed in. Uh, and it, it just it wasn't a good experience. I miss being able to stand there in front of the hauler and to see everything up on display, wait in line and kind of peruse the wall, look at what's there, and then go, okay, I want number 23 in, a, in an XL. I just found that a much more rewarding experience than the mayhem that you have to you have to go through now. And I know that they say they're offering you more items, but I just didn't see that. And unfortunately, when it comes to buying sort of accessory items, stickers or keychains or iPhone cases or iPad cases, I mean, things like that, that's really difficult to go and try to get your hands on because it's – They put them in these center kiosks that are surrounded by the T-shirts, and so you're blocking everybody if you're trying to browse. I just – I bought a few items, and then when I got home this week, I went and purchased a couple T-shirts online that I wanted to get just because it was easier. I I, And I know that's not going to change, and I gave it a second race to go and do that, and maybe I need to go at a time when it's less crowded – but I even got to the race early and set it up so that I can go back into the car and hang out and just watch TV on the iPad for a while with the air conditioner going until I went inside. And, you know, it, it just it wasn't a good experience. The race was a fantastic experience. The buying experience, not so much. All right, so let's get to this weekend. Um, in first practice on Friday before qualifying, Dale Jr. had a steering bearing that seized up. And on the first few runs, the car was all screwed up because they had this problem that they didn't realize they had. So it wasn't until the final run in practice that they actually got that fixed. And then when Dale Jr. went out to do his qualifying run, he got wicked sideways uh, going into turns three and four on his on his lap run. And it just... it. I mean, look, it killed that lap. I mean, he even tweeted out a a GIF file of him setting that Batman uh, nationwide 88 sideways through the corner and and made a comment. As a matter of fact, I have it up right here. Here it is. He says, uh, no reward for style points today. We're going to be fine, though. And he still ended up qualifying 27th, even with pitching the car as sideways as he did. Today in, in... Now, the problem was... Let me back up here. With qualifying, the problem was... This track is so rough. It just eats the tires. So if you don't do a single run through all three rounds, if you make it through all three rounds and just do one run run through all three, there's no way you're going to make it. Everybody who tried to do a second lap, uh, a second lap under speed in the first round, none of them increased their speed. So he's going to start 27th, 27th in uh, Sunday's race again. Now, the good news is the car seems seems really uh, really fast. Uh, he his his top ten uh, average lap times leaves something to be desired. He was in the top ten in the first practice earlier this morning. Was only sitting up in the top twenty in top ten lap speed lap speeds in the second in in, in final practice. But the problem is they're limited on tires, and I haven't gathered enough information to know, you know, how old the tires were that they were running on and what their agenda was. Dale Jr. has been really quiet online uh, in regards to the car. He hasn't tweeted anything since after practice, which usually gives me cause for concern. I was heading into this weekend's race based off of what happened last weekend and Dale Jr.'s history at the track. He's never won here, but his 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 top finishes, as a matter of fact, let me go ahead and get that. 
All right, I got the info that I need now, and this is going to play into my prediction because I was heading in to the race this weekend with a mindset of where I was going to go, and I got to dial back my prediction on this. So let me let me give you sort of his history here so far. He has two runner-up fin- finishes here at Fontana. One of them, of course, the famous one where uh, where he ended up passing towards the end in the wreck between Joey Logano and uh, Denny Hamlin that ended up injuring Denny Hamlin's back really bad a couple of years ago. Um has not earned a victory, year, uh, a victory there yet. He earned a sixth-place finish in 2015. Hasn't finished outside the top 12 in the last five mis- uh, visits there. There was one race early on at Hendrick where he wrecked. Uh, this That was the race where, oh, that was still so disappointing. He had a really fast car, and they ended up having to postpone it, and the weather was really bad, and the track was wet, and he spun out and crashed it on the backstretch in the first couple of laps. Um, according to NASCAR's loop data statistics, Earnhardt leads among all active drivers in the last 10 years in green flag passes at SoCal Speedway with 1,487. Uh, he had this to say about Fontana. I'm looking forward to getting to Fontana. I love what we're doing in the sport with the new aero package. I think we've seen some good racing. It's been a blast. The package allows for all kinds of great things. We're having all, a lot of fun, and I hope it continues this weekend. Fontana is another track with multiple grooves, so it should be another fun race. Jimmy is good there, and I hear he threw out a challenge to us last week, so there's some extra incentive. We've had success with the Batman car in the past, and so hopefully we continue on that. And, yeah, talking about the pain schemes, Dale Jr. broke that massive losing streak a number of years ago when he took the black Diet Mountain Dew, Dark Knight Rises, Batman paint scheme to victory lane at Michigan. I still remember that race. As a matter of fact, I ended up going out a viral video off that one of videotaping myself, uh, getting all excited for that win. Uh, that paint scheme was really cool, too. I actually like this one a little bit better, and I'm going to watch Dark Knight Rises tonight, however, just in honor of Dale Jr. running the Batman car. Um, so going into this race, I was really – I was pegging to – give a, a victory lane um, prediction <laughs> for for Dale Jr. come Sunday. That's what I was expecting to do. I, I thought that practice was going to be a lot better than what it was, and it seems like they got behind the eight ball early on because of that steering bearing that had seized up on him, and so it's a little unfair to say the team unloaded slow because we really don't know. I know Dale Jr. was not able to run the top at all during the practices today. And he made a comment about that, and somebody else had made a comment about that too during the during the uh, the chatter between him and Greg Ives during practice. He made a comment that he just there was never an opportunity for the top that got rubbered up enough to where he can go up there. So I think eventually, if he can get up there and run the top, he'll be in good shape. The other thing that I thought was really interesting that I didn't see any of the commentators pick up on is that in turns three and four, Dale Jr. was running the was running the white line at the bottom of the track. And he was really riding the apron close. And he doesn't do that normally. And I know some other drivers do that a lot. They find some speed down there on the apron, Kevin Harvick specifically. I do think that regardless of the fact that the practices weren't quite as good as I would have hoped, but again, I'm limited on information, I can do my math and deduct the individuals that were sitting faster than him on 10-lap averages that I know we're going to end up fading away. And that gives me a little bit better gauge over how I expect him to do. But I think with his history there, the promotion around the car, and this stuff matters. It it, it does. I mean, the momentum going into the race, how close he was to a victory last week. He's in a better position now in the points that he was heading into Phoenix. He's now 39 points to the good out of 16th without a win, but he is sitting in in the 10th place in the standings. Given the fact that we don't know yet if he can reach the high line, and hopefully that'll rubber in at some point during the during the during the race, I'm gonna go ahead and and give a give a solid top five on this. I, I and I probably shouldn't. I should probably go top ten just based off the fact that we're starting 27th and the practices didn't go well. But the momentum, the promotion, his history at the track, uh, the the problems they had early on. How he ran last week and the, fa- and the fact that with this package, it seems as if they're able to really make gains 
on the track. It seems like they're able to get up behind cars and pass them. And we saw that during practice. I was keeping an eye on that. This low downforce package affords the opportunity that if you get if you get up to somebody, you can get by them now. Where you you would get stuck and you'd get arrow tight behind the cars last year and you weren't able to get by them. I think that early in the race, you're going to see Dale Jr. work his way up into the top 10 with some adjustments. And he can, and then, and then the opportunity to move to the high line eventually. I think he can get it up into the top five. So I'm going to say solid, a solid, solid. I'm tired. I'm going to say solid top five, um, a top five for for Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the number 80, 88 uh, Batman uh, Nationwide car for Sunday. That's my pick. I'm sticking to it. And I've been, let's see, apart from Daytona, I think I've been right every week. I think every prediction that I had, right, right, yeah, I think I've been good. Yeah, well, we'll see. I'll have to go back and listen. I know Daytona, obviously, I got wrong because he wrecked. But Atlanta, I was right. Vegas, I was right. Right? Wasn't I right in Vegas? I know I was right in, I know I was right in Phoenix. And I think I'm going to be right tomorrow, too. So, uh, there you go. It should be fun. There's going to be a lot of Batman versus Superman stuff. And I'm going to actually um, watch the pre-race. Usually, I, I avoid the pre-race. And I just kind of run my own race on the Xbox uh, 360, but I think I may actually go and watch the pre-race stuff because I think they're going to do a lot of fun, different promotional items for this uh, Dale Jr. Jimmy Johnson deal. And that'll be a fun little race within the race too, I think, just to make it a little bit more interesting. And again, I love the I, I love it when they do movie themes with the, with, the, with the race cars. I love that kind of sponsorship. I was really bummed they didn't do a Star Wars one with anybody last year, but, um, you know, hey, beggars can't be choosers. So, all right. Did I just say that? Did I just say beggars can't be choosers? I'm trying to wrap the podcast up. And oftentimes when I try to wrap the podcast up, I say stupid things like that. So top five for Dale Jr. I hope you enjoy the race as much as I plan to. I hope you enjoyed the podcast as much as I did recording it. And um, that being said, remember, you can always drop me an email, talkshownerd at gmail.com, talkshownerd at gmail.com. Follow me on Twitter at John Justice, J-O-N Justice. If you see my tweet pop up for the podcast, please retweet it. Really helps me in terms of increasing the downloads. I just do it for myself, so it's an ego thing, but I like it when a lot of people listen to this. Follow me on uh, iTunes, The John Justice Show, and My Nerd World. And until uh, next week, again, good luck to Dale Jr., uh, I hope you enjoy the race. We'll talk to you next week. And with that, go, Junior. My nerd world. And finally, one of the most unusual pre-race prayers you will ever hear. Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight for all your blessings. You said in all things give thanks. So we want to thank you tonight for these mighty machines that you've brought before us. Thank you for the Dodges and the Toyotas. Thank you for the Fords. And most of all, we thank you for Ralph and Yates. To give us the power that we see before us tonight. Thank you for Jim, for Formas, and College, and the RO7 engines. Thank you for Sonoma Race and Fuel, and look at your tires to bring performance and power to the track. Boogie dee, boogie dee, boogie dee, anyway. Boogie dee, boogie dee, boogie dee, anyway. Thanks for drivers and usual tonight. Boogie dee, boogie dee, boogie dee, anyway. Lord, I want to thank you for my smoking hot wife tonight, Lisa.